So Andreas, can you first tell us why is a low-fat diet so important in these patients with FCS? I would say not a low-fat diet. I would say an extremely low-fat diet for patients with uh, this condition. Why? They don't have the enzyme that breaks apart the chylomicrons, the triacylglycerides, so the tendency of have very, very high levels, despite having a meal with very little fat, it's there. So they're always going to be at risk of developing pancreatitis. The diets that we recommend these patients to have are, in general, vegetables, fruits, lean meats, poultry being the one that it's higher in the list. But, you know, it's extremely important to get these patients together with a dietitian and nutritionist that have some type of experience that would be even better, even though it's frequently difficult to find, that can guide the patients on these very restricted diets. Is there certain types of fats or is just all fats that I'm taking in that's an issue? And, and what is that number? And, and maybe just how many tablespoons of oil or teaspoons of oil is that a day that I'm limited to? That's a very good question also because from a patient perspective, you know, just saying grams, which when you read that the books, it's usually less than 20 grams. But in reality, what that does mean, I tend to tell patients just to have four teaspoons max, and that's a day. So you can think that four teaspoons a day of any type of fat, how much that is. When you look in a regular meal in somebody that has a regular diet, you know, I don't know how many tablespoons of fat they have in the diet, but it's much more than four, five, 10, 12. So these diets are very restricted. And again, we emphasize a lot vegetables, fruits, lean meats, and uh, when using particularly oils to cook, to make sure that they use the least possible. One of the things that they can use, but they have to buy these, and it's not always easy to find, it's short-chain fatty acids. And I'm being told that they usually don't taste too good either. So it's difficult to find, they can be a little bit expensive, and it's not the best tasting uh, type of fat. So, Andreas, this sounds incredibly difficult to adhere to such an ultra-low-fat diet. What are other resources I can go to that might help me if I have this disease? I think a dietitian is going to be of great help. If you have a dietitian that has experience with patients with FCS, that's going to be even better, but it's usually not the norm. We have the FCS Foundation as well as the National Pancreas Foundation, that there are great resources for patients to get and get more information. A lipid clinic would be of great help, particularly helping you, guide you where to go. If you are newly diagnosed, I think it's a must, and I think that it's good to have an expert that has a lot, for, a lot of experience managing patients with any type of lipid disorder to keep a close eye on you. I would say don't expect your gastroenterologist, you know, to be managing your lipid disorder. You want a real expert. And one of the problems that our patients face is that, who is this expert? Sometimes you have an academic institution near you and they may have a lipid clinic. I think that in the real world, not every state, not every area has this. So look for a cardiologist, look for an endocrinologist. There may be an internist that has a strong interest in lipid disorders, but just try to find somebody that knows what they're doing, somebody that has a strong interest that will be able to help you and guide you on how to treat your condition.